guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. Uh, so today is a part three on pipe smoking and health, um, something that we really need to uh, be aware of. I um, mean, I wanted to cover this summer specifically here in 2021. Now, before moving on into the video, maybe you're going to skip. I want to help you pause or encourage you to pause. Uh, let me let me mention a couple of things. Uh, number one is uh, other than some, than some basic EMT training, I am not a professional. Um, I don't have uh, any further training in this region. I'm simply wanting to do this video, uh, give you some information of some studies that have been done on pipe smoking, and leave it at that. I really want to be cautious on any other uh, oh, any other uh, um, comments on the study itself. Uh, secondly, please go back and listen to part one and two of this series. Uh, part one with Dr. Weiss, who's a surgeon who gives his insight on pipe smoking and health, and then Dr. Spurgeon, a dentist, um, who gives his insight on the oral health side of things that we need to be aware of. So with that aside, let's get into the topic. I want to show you two, um, two topics, or excuse me, two studies uh, that I believe are very sound very you know delivers uh, quite a bit of information uh, and are quite expansive both in time um, and the uh, the the amount of participants so the first one i want to send you to make you aware of is this one in the journal of the national cancer institute um, it is labeled the association between exclusive pipe smoking and mortality from cancer and other diseases. Now, if we look down at some of the basic information in the background, you see it, it expands, or uh, uh, it expands from uh, since the 1960s onward um, on the prevalence of pipe smoking and talking about how it's declined, but it's taking into consideration uh, quite a cohort of individuals. So they studied uh, or took into consideration in their study 130,370. Uh, seven men um, that were uh, included in the report and this was in a 1982 enrollment and it went onwards to 2000 when they um, examined these men again of these men that were examined uh, 15,263 were pipe smokers or former pipe smokers so, so quite a a, a solid group of pipe smokers to to base these results off of and that's why I um, my when I was examining various studies I this one just kind of kept with me if you will um, and so they give some analysis on on the the men who uh, they studied after several years and coming back to and we, if we look further down we see that relative risk of lung cancer showed statistically significant increase with the number of pipes smoked per day, years of smoking, and depth of inhalation, and decreases with years since quitting. So they, they did take a various amount of variables into place or into consideration, I should, I should say. Um, so again, that, that's one thing that um, made this study stick out more than some others I found is um, the various things they are considering. In this study, which you can find the link below, in this study there's various tables you can look at. I'm going to just bring up a couple of them for your consideration. Uh, let's look at this table two. Table two is consisting of causes of death um, and pipe smoking status, a number of deaths, uh, the rate adjusted, uh, age adjust adjusted HR, and then multivariable adjusted HR. I am not going to go through all of this. That's, that's This is stuff you can read. Let me just pinpoint a couple of things. Uh, to bring to your attention. So on these all causes of death, um, never, you know, we see the uh, pipe smoking status with a 20,620. Current pipe smokers, and this is really where I'm going to focus on, okay? So, the, you know, I'm not going to so much focus on former, but current. Uh, compared to the 1.0 reference baseline, of all causes with current pipe smokers and, and including their deaths, number of deaths, it's a 1.28. Um, so I would say it's not a significant increase. Or if we can go to the multivariable adjusted HR is a 1.33. Um, but then it depends, of course, on what type of um, causes of death there were. Uh, we, th we see the oropharynx cancer is a bit higher with a 3.9, uh, 3.90 with the multivariable. Uh, esophageal cancer, 2.47, 2.44 multivariable. 
Uh, stomach cancer is down here with a uh, 1.11 or 1.115. Uh, and then we go onward with some various cancers. I want to pinpoint a, a big one, and that is larynx. So here we see with the current pipe smokers, 15.2 uh, uh, and a 13.1 multivariable. So that's that's one to bring to attention uh, that maybe we need to bear in mind is the larynx cancer. Um, though I, I do wonder with those pipe smokers, uh, what their background is with cigarette smoking, as I would think there would be more of an issue of inhaling um, or how far the smoke uh, travels down the throat with those who have former experience with cigarette smoking. As most pipe smokers are not going to let the smoke travel too far down. I know that we can't control it all, but that's just one thing that came to mind when studying this, um, this table. Lung cancer of 4.92 to 5.0, so that's another a larger one as well, which my mind goes back to what I just made the comment on is inhalation. Um, and then we have bladder cancer and uh, CHD, uh, cerebral disease, and some uh, uh, chronic COPD. Um, so those are some other ones to bear in mind. So this table is helpful just to see what overall uh, causes of death and in the... Um, the increase there was with current pipe smokers. Let's jump on to uh, another one I want to bring your attention, and that is this table three. Not easy to read um, if you um, if you look at the at the link itself, but this covers the number of pipes smoked um, in a day, and then the duration of years, and the inhalation. Um, and so I'm not going to read it all once again, but look at that lung cancer. Uh, a 1.99 for those who smoke one to three per day. Uh, not a significant jump there um, compared to a baseline level of 1.0 inferent um, or referent, excuse me. And then it jumps quite considerably with to a 5.23 with a four to six pipes smoked per day. And you can see the esophageal, stomach, and colorectal uh, differences with those type of cancers. Uh, down to the, to the duration uh, for those who smoked one to 24 years. Um, it doesn't increase with more years than that, but uh, until you get to plus 45, though I would think there's some other variables going into play at that significant time of smoking. Uh, and then uh, finally with inhalation. Now again, I'm really curious, how do they study Inhalation, how do they determine how far smoke is traveling down the throat? There is probably some equipment I'm just not aware of, so just bear that in mind. That's why I'm asking. I'm not saying that they're wrong or uh, this is not an accurate test or study. I'm just curious how they do it uh, because I know, depending on your background, especially if you've been a cigarette smoker, you can inhale quite a bit more than a non-cigarette smoker. So this is the one study I wanted to bring to your mind, one that uh, maybe isn't so... Uh, doesn't bear a, as much of a brighter light for us who are pipe smokers, but it seems it has a, quite a solid base of information that they pull out of. Now, the, the second one I want to bring to your attention, and I know some of you already know of this one, is was, was some summary notes from the lecture of Henry uh, Gaboriau, who's a medical doctor. This is back in 2002 at the Seattle Pipe Club. And uh, let me just run through some of this information, um, though, again, I'm sending you the links or dropping them below. You can examine this. You look at the highest and lowest risk from tobacco products are as follow. And it's interesting to see for pipe enthusiasts or pipe tobacco smokers, it's not lungs or throats. Um, it's actually the tongue that we need to be most uh, aware of um, and, and involving risk uh, that we need to bear in mind lung cancer risk study. Uh, by the way, that uh, that source of webline with the review, 22 articles, 21,520 smokers, um, I wasn't able to find the the source of that. Um, I, I jumped around to other places and I never found the actual uh, origin of that study. But nonetheless, we can see that if you smoke three bowls per day, it's about 1.5. That's where I land personally. I'm around three to four probably. Um, so 1.5 over a uh, one point baseline. Now, just to show us the great distinction we have between cigarette smokers and pipe smokers, a cigarette smoker 
is at a 16 times the risk of, of non-smokers uh, when it comes to lung cancer. And even if we take in pipe tobacco, uh, the rate for a three bowl per day, one and a half compared to 16 times. What a difference that is. So I want to, this is one thing I feel comfortable of putting myself on the line and saying, you cannot defend the idea that we, our risk of pipe smoking is the same as a cigarette. It seems like no matter where you go, there's at least some type of understanding that we are on a different level of activity. It's apples and oranges. Uh, it's, I, I just think it's unfair whether we're thinking of, of um, insurance or what have you lo loping in together pipe cigar smokers and cigarette smoking is just unfair in my opinion but maybe that's another topic for another day let's keep going uh, bladder cancer 1.9 risk for pipe smokers compared to 1.0 of course for a non um, on this part four do pipe and and cigar smokers in hell, I'm not going to cover that. That's something that I want to encourage you to look at. It's something to bear in mind for yourself uh, and we need to watch out for. I think you who are former cigarette smokers or maybe current cigarette smokers who smoke a pipe, this is something you need to be aware of for sure. Uh, reducing the risk of tongue, uh, tongue burn or tongue and mouth cancers, that's stuff you need to catch on um, and I'm going to cover some of that in a part four video. Medical examinations, another thing. Bear in mind, uh, read for yourself. The life expectancy of pipe smokers is quite interesting. I know the Country Squires covered this, uh, but the death rates for current pipe smokers was little, if at all, higher than for non-smokers. Even with men smoking 10 pipe uh, fulls per day, and with men who had smoked pipes for more than 30 years. So this is a very interesting study. Um, take that for what you will. It's really interesting to, to read that, and I guess there's some comfort in that. Um, and then there's some other interesting facts and some to keep in mind on part eight of this uh, of this site and uh, page. So with all that given to you guys, um, again, I just wanted to make you aware. Um, we need to be uh, be keeping up with our health, ideally, especially if we have families and loved ones, um, or if we just simply want to have a, a long term enjoyment of this hobby. Uh, so. Always bear in mind what your personal uh, physician says, your dentist says. Um, that's stuff we need to keep uh, keep in mind. However, bear this these studies in mind as well, and um, let's just not we don't have to dwell on them, but they are useful in determining how often we smoke, maybe, or maybe if we need to smoke at all with some um, borderline or uh, baseline issues and other diseases we may have. So I'm gonna try to leave it at that and not get myself in some trouble. Um, if you have any questions or thoughts or comments, please leave them below. Um, and again, go back to those other videos I did do. My final video is going to be on what I do for my health. All right, so that's going to be part four, final video of my pipe health. Um, um, and I just want to bring to light some things I personally do um, to keep track of um, my daily, weekly health as well. So that's all I have, guys. I hope you take care, and we will talk to you soon.